Mike George. BBC Hereford and Worcester. BBC Hereford and Worcester. My George with you until four o'clock and a couple from the play on at the Morven Theatres at the moment. And that uh, season's greetings. We've got Glenis Barber coming in and also Matthew Bowes. He'll be here, they'll be here in the next few minutes on BBC Hereford and Worcester having a chat about them, about their lives, about acting and about the play that's on at the Morven Theatres at the moment. BBC Hereford and Worcester, my George till four, joined in the studios by Glenis Barber and also Matthew Bowes. You two, welcome for a start. Thank, Thank you. you. you Listen, the first time I've had two people in here that really... You obviously gel and get on. Oh, and it's do. not always the same oh, when we you have get a, a group. lot of history. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of history. Some we can talk about and some we just um, simply can't. It's sort of called stalking. Yeah. Because, you she know, stalks me. Every job I do, he turns up. <laughs> and um, it's, it's hell. Basic I mean, help. And it must help, if you, you must help if you get on, mustn't it? You can't it do does. it. Yeah. Well, it does. When you with see what you we have like to do in the play awful. together... <laughs> yes, I, I I have to jump on him. Oh, really? Yes, and then he has to run around the stage <laughs> with my heavy weight. Not heavy. And um... She's as light as a piece of broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. We'll talk more about the play in just a little while, but first of all, let's talk about you two. First of all, uh, Glenis Ladies first. Um, uh, recently been on EastEnders, obviously, yes. and, and yeah. perhaps we, we also remember you from Dempsey and Make Peace, but, but uh, uh, you guess... Though. And Demmerdale. Have you been in Emmerdale? <laughs> yes, I know you've I, been in Emmerdale. That's, my that's why you... Oh, I see. Yeah. I see, I you see, I should have done I that as a competition see. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, is it, is it a, a, a bit difficult when you're leaving a long-term job to, to, to sort of... The, the first day or two afterwards? Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, no, it is. Especially something, you know, something as intense as EastEnders. Well, I did, I did uh, about a year on it, mm. and it was really, really intense and you you invest a lot in your character and um so then suddenly you're not going to play that character anymore it's a, it's a, it's a funny feeling it's a, it's a sort of there's definitely an adjustment period and i felt I, I was amazed at how i felt actually it was sort of almost a a kind of sort of grieving because there's this this person that you're playing almost more than you're playing yourself for a while. You know, that's what it feels mm. like on some days because the hours are so long and I had quite big storylines, uh, you know, f certainly for the last few months, so it, it it really was intense. And you just don't know how you... you know, One moment you can be this character and play this character and then the next minute, no. Like, mm. it's, it's as if that character doesn't exist. It's not just you and the character, but then all the, all the people that are around you as well that oh, you yes, see yes, every day. Because, yes, yeah. exactly. It's, it's a way of life. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's quite a... I, I, I first noticed this when I actually went into Emmerdale, mm. that, you know, because people do tend to stay quite a long time in soaps and it becomes this whole other little world and quite the safe little world. And I noticed that a lot of people don't like to leave that little, that little yeah, world. because it is safe, isn't so it? And, and such a precarious profession yes. that you're did in. You, did, did, did you, you find, find that, Matthew? Yes, I did. I mean, that's very true, that you play that person so much. And then, because I was on Emmerdale for nearly five years, mm. and the other thing that carries on afterwards is that you're still that person to a lot of people. <laughs> so when you're no longer that person, um, you are, of course. And for me, I'm still Paul in so many ways, because <laughs> we were together for such a long time. But people still, you know, I met a nice, a lovely lady, Sharon, and her mother in the street today, who... Um, called me Paul and because that happens a lot and I respond to it because in a way I am Paul and I'm very happy to be Paul still for those people but of course I don't get to be Paul anymore mm. you know which is so I you miss out on that part it's very it strange like people bleep. don't normally think about that as you are actors you know they think all oh, right that's acting close the door open another one or perhaps not open or another not. one because <laughs> it is that yeah. is it, it is yeah. a tricky profession isn't it both of them I mean, you must have yes, had, yes you must have had lean years oh absolutely i mean I've, I've been in this business for a very long time now so yes i've i've, I've I keep thinking, God, what, what else can I actually go and do now? <laughs> I've been everywhere. Point, yes, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've even been in just about every soap now. So, uh, Matthew, yeah. you have another string to your bow. I do. I own a pub. 
And another stream. Could and you do I do plenty? some art. Yes. yes. <laughs> hey, so you I own a lots. pub? Yes, I do. Where do you own a pub? In a place called Burley and Wharfdale. Well, Glenn should tell you, she's I've been... I've been there with a whole cast when we were staying in Sheffield. We, we did a day trip, we got the train, and um, and we went, and it's just absolutely divine. Absolutely divine. We had <laughs> a lunch that was heaven. Everything, everything is... It's my. This, this is my kind of thing. Everything is locally sourced. Everything is in season. They know where. They know how that animal lived. They know where that vegetable was grown. Everything is within what, a, like a few mile mm, radius yeah. of the pub. I mean, it was and the food. Even was the beer is local. Yeah. yeah. So. And 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 just sort of very warm and casual. I mean, it's not you know, it's not fancy. It's just an absolutely village pub, and, and you, you can go in there. You can buy and it... everything in there as well, which they thought was quite amusing. You can buy everything. It's called the Queen's Head, and no jokes, please. And it's um, <laughs> and it uh, you can buy everything in there. The food. I mean, we are. It's it is great. Well, basically, what he means so. is he's just put a label on everything. So every chair. <laughs> you're sitting on every you table you're it. sitting on there's a label with a price wishful thinking no, it worked because Jenny Funnel who plays one. Rachel in the show she yeah. bought a chair so <laughs> you, I did see people walking out we're going with chandeliers <laughs> and you know pieces of the furniture and you know taking things off the walls like, oh, I'll take that absolutely <laughs> because hilarious. we're tweeteramas me, me and Glynis we tweet and uh, each other as well as much as we tweeted all sorts of things from there so we've really enjoyed it it was, quite, it was a tweet fest yeah. that night yeah. Is that where you live, Matthew, by the way? Do you, yes. do you, that's yeah, your base. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a lovely Yorkshire. Place. It's sort of right at the bottom of Ilkley Moor, so mm. it's great. It's right. Beautiful. Listen, don't go away, you two. We've hardly started talking, and oh, look at the time. We were the <laughs> But right now, back to Matthew and Glynis, both of them appearing in the season's greetings at the Morven Theatre. Uh, we were talking earlier about you and your painting, and mm. while we weren't talking and uh, Paul Young was singing... Yes. Both Glynis and I decided that you really ought to put your paintings on your wall. <laughs> in, the, in, in, in the pub. In the pub. Yeah. Definitely. So I don't know why I haven't done These paintings are fantastic. Fantastic. What are they of? What do you do? Well, mostly portraits, actually, yeah. at the moment. I've been doing Has he some... done you, Glynis? Uh, no. What a good idea. Oh, yeah. You see? Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> um, look, I've been doing a lot of... Uh, I, I just did some stuff for Monkey World. I just did a chimpanzee. Sort mm. of Definitely not. Sally, yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and, and people ask me to do... I've done a lot of animals and things. I used to do people more, but I don't know. I've drifted into people's pets. People, I think, tend to prefer to have portraits of their pets than themselves, mm. actually. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, you know... When we go into your pub, the Queen said, where is it? Between the Burley and Wharf Burley, uh, we, we hope now to see some of his stuff Definitely. on the wall. <laughs> because everything has oh, As we heard earlier, everything has got, got a, a label on Everything's it. got a little price tag on the <laughs> front. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we better go to the play, I suppose, which will oh, appear right. in the oh, morning. Oh, right then. <laughs> There's a, it's a fair-sized cast. It's called uh, Season's Greeting. It's one of Alan Akebourne's. Uh, never a bad Alan Akebourne play, is there? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, I, I, because he's so prolific and he's been doing it for so long, you know, I, I think sometimes one tends to take him for granted, but I actually think he's a complete genius. And he's, and he's not as easy to do as it looks, I can tell you. Well, that's why you're there, to make it look yes. easy yeah. Yeah. for us it's, to sit in the audience actually, and say, oh, come uh, on, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and, you know, he, he's the one who came up with sort of doing multiple plays, all taking place at the same time but in different rooms. And, you know, as you, you know, he began with the Norman Conquests mm. where there were three plays all set at the same time, one in the garden, one in the kitchen, one in the living room. You know, who else has done that? It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Where and audiences he... take it in a different exactly. direction, mm. depending on who they want to do things, you know. And on this, we uh, I think that this is part of the sort of 80s group of plays that he did, which are very um, uh, location-specific. So ours takes place in a hallway, really. Um, he said he thought that was one of the few places he hadn't set a play. So <laughs> yeah. he thought, and of course it's Christmas, so there will be something that everybody will recognise, I think. In, uh, I mean, obviously it's an Alan Akebourne Christmas, so it's no ordinary Christmas. But uh, it's interesting because there is, uh, I think most people, even though it's written in that era, most people relate to something now and, you know, are moved by it. It's very funny, but it's quite dark in places. It's, it's sort of very Very dark, mix. really. Hmm. I mean, it is a comedy and there are a lot of laughs, but it is, you know, it's... it's it's it an is underlying a very, darkness, very dark, dark yeah. comedy, yeah. yeah. High Wickham last week, more than this week, where next week? 
Well, funnily enough, we have a week off next week. Really? Because uh, there was a problem with the theatre that we were going uh. to. So uh, the week after, we're in Wolverhampton, mm. Mm. and then we're in Brighton. Which is Glynis' last week with us. Oh, Can right. Yes, because I'm not yes. in the last week, in, which is in Bath, which is, yeah. of course, sold out, because I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've just said that to me. It's not true. Uh, because you, you stay together as a group for quite some time, yes. don't you? And, yes. and th- then perhaps another group take over. And, and actors come and go because of maybe perhaps other commitments of the actors that are there. Of course. Yeah. Well, we're like a family. You become an instant family in a way. I know lots of people say this and it sounds a bit trite, but it's true. You do sort of become this. And because and then there's a parallel because on the play, everyone except me is related in some way or, or another. So and then you like different people. You know, there's a lot of odd uh, relationships that you end up in, really, because you just end up ha- you go on tour with these people like we're all in Malvern together because we're we, because we well, none of us live here, so we are all here together. So we're the only people we know. So we end up sort of hanging out together, which is a good job that we sort of like each other, really. Yes, Otherwise, well, I, I mean, that is one of the odd things of an actor's existence is like you know being in something like Emmerdale. I'm sure you're in touch with a lot of people, and uh, you know, in EastEnders, and you just you just get so close to people. You see so much of them. You see more of them than your own family. But then when you leave that job and you go on to another one, you it's instantly you don't really i mean you do you know you don't keep in touch with everybody you 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 do make friendships here and there and you obviously do keep in touch but you instantly have to go and put all your attention onto the next job so both of you uh, mm. both of you have had long runs in soap does that make it difficult for you to go back on telly you particularly matthew with five years but also well, I've, you know, yeah I, the most i've ever done is a year yeah so, i think that's a good way to do it actually. yeah, yeah. I think when five years and Ricky Groves is in uh, the show as well, who's on EastEnders for nine mm. years, and Christopher Timothy, the national treasure that he is, he is you know still known for yes. James Herriot. Mm. So even though he's on Doctors for five years as well, but mm. I think that uh, Ricky is known so much for that, and I think nine years is different. So I think Glynis has played it very well because mm. she's been on all these things, but and you end up you you just become a, a, a television face, or it, rather than a, a you know somebody who's known as I'm known as Paul. Most people don't know my real name. A lot of people don't know Ricky's real name. They know him as Gary Hobbs. Mm. So, you know, I think that that, is which, which is a sort of odd mix yeah. then, isn't it? Also, isn't it strange about Ricky? I mean, you know, he's also now Strictly Come Dancing. Yes. yes and and yes. that's just one show that lasts for three months. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what an impact something like that has. And he's the most yeah. incredible. He and Barbara, who um, plays Patty in the show, Barbara Drennan, she, um, they do they dance around the place together and they're both, <laughs> you know, they just go off and suddenly waltz off or <laughs> foxtrot off yeah, somewhere yeah, in the yeah. back, in the wings. It is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, listen, you two, we're going to have to bring this to a close. Um, it's, I know, I mean, oh. I'm having such a good time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, do you know what you're doing next? I worry about actors. Uh, well, I'm doing a panto. Hooray! That's why. I, that's why I'm leaving the, oh, um, right. the, the the play yes. one week early because no, you have to, to. You're supposed to say, "Oh no, you're not." <laughs> I, know. I thought, "All oh, right." We, uh, are I'd, you signed, doing I'd actually <laughs> signed up for the panto first, mm. which is why I can't complete the last week here. So I, I shall be in Tunbridge Wells for the first time in my life ever doing a panto, thanks to EastEnders. So I'm you're doing. You're playing um, the wicked one then. I, uh, yes. How did you know? Just got, uh, I don't know. I just you know. You, she's been I, practicing her wicked laugh. Yes, I am the bad fairy in, in Sleeping Cute. <laughs> uh, Matthew, and do I you need know to be very bad. Do you very know what's bad. next? No, I don't. I've got Christmas at the pub, so that oh, will no, uh, yeah. well, now I'll probably busy. be lying down in a dark room for all of January. Yeah. <laughs> I think. As I think I will too. Actually. <laughs> Listen, you two enjoy your stay here. You. Uh, enjoy your time in season's greetings. Thank you for coming in. I've had a I've had a ball. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, uh, Glynis Barber and uh, Matthew Bowes. Thank you very much for joining us.